Hi, this is David from Media Cybernetics. In this quick movie, we'll be showing you how to do a count in the new Image Pro Premiere. The essence of doing a count is to identify the object, measure the object, refine the count if necessary, and somehow handle the data. In Image Pro Premiere, counting is achieved by going through to the Count Size tab. In the Count Size ribbon, you'll find all the tools you need to segment your object, do the count, Edit, split the object if necessary, select which measurements are inter interesting to you, and display the data in various formats. In this case, we're looking at an image of dark spots. We can start by either finding bright, dark, or manual segmentation. We'll start with dark segmentation in this case. And the software automatically identifies what it thinks is likely to be an object. We can edit the discount if required. Edit this segmentation if required. Once we're happy with the segmentation, we click Count to count our objects. The objects are counted, measured, and all the data appears in the data table. Once the count is done, we can add options to split objects. We can manually split the objects by clicking and dragging and cutting a line across the object double clicking to finish it. When finish, objects are split along those lines. Count again to reset. This time I'm going to do a watershed split. A watershed split looks for a change in intensity across the length of the object. But we can also look for boundary shape, which is looking for edge-shaped objects. But I'm going to go for a watershed split. Hit split, and you can see it's done a pretty good job of these two. Not so good in this case, but still, it's a lot better. In fact, what we can do is we can automatically split objects after the count. So, count and objects automatically split as part of the count. The next thing we need to do is select which, which measurements we're interested in. Under the measurements part of the count size ribbon, we can click on types. On the left, all the measurements available. And if we select a measurement on the left and add it across, it's now selected. Likewise, you could select a measurement on the right, click remove to remove it from the list. Once we've selected all the measurements we're interested in, we can close this window. If necessary, you can edit ranges. When you select measurements, you notice that when you select measurements, you notice that they have numbers, minimum and maximum ranges. These allow to exclude objects based on their measurement values. If the image is calibrated, these will be in calibrated units. In this case, the image is not calibrated, so this is just in pixels. Clicking the Options button will allow us to change the display of the objects and also certain functions of how the objects are counted, including selecting connectivity for um, dendrites measurements, for example, selecting clean borders for morphological analysis, fill holes for objects that have apparent holes in them, and so on. When we finish with analysis, we can look at the data histogram, we can look at the object window, which allows us to see individual objects, and the data table. From the data table, we can also export our information by just clicking the export button, open Excel, and paste all the information in for us. Select an object and click the delete selected box to delete only the selected objects, or click the delete all box to remove all objects. Now in this case what we have is we have relatively dark objects on a relatively bright background but we now have two different types of objects. We have those blue objects and also those brown objects. We also have a problem with shading in the right hand side of the image. In this case we, can't, we can no longer select just bright or dark objects. The shading and the colour will get in the way. 
Instead, we'll use a smart segmentation tool. Click on the smart segmentation tool, and it'll enable on the right. Here, we can define multiple classes if required. Select what constitutes an object in the class, what constitutes background, and when we're happy with count. I'm just going to zoom in first to see what we can do a little bit better. And then we just click and draw a region on the object, on the image, to select what constitutes an object of that class. As soon as we select a background region, we see the segmentation, and we can then add multiple objects if necessary. And in this case, as we mentioned earlier, there's a problem with shading, so we have everything on the right here being considered to be an object. If we just add another region, everything else is selected. Now if we want to identify a second type of object, we can just switch to the second class. And again, click and drag on the image to select what is considered to be an object. Now second class is added to those measurements. Click the count button and the objects are measured. Again, as before, we can change the types of measurements to selecting the range of objects that is included, and edit our count in any way that is necessary. That's it. If you have any further questions, please do get in touch with your local sales representative or dealer. Thank you.